So here's a problem using the Dirac delta function. It's um, an impulsive force. So the inhomogeneous term is modeled by a Dirac delta function that uh, hits at t equals zero. So physically, if this was, say, a mass on a spring or a uh, pendulum, you would have a hammer hitting the mass at t equals zero. The mass is initially at rest with zero velocity, and the impulsive force will then impart some momentum to the uh, object. So we assume that this will act at a time slightly larger than zero. OK? Um, how do we solve this? We have to take the Laplace transform of this equation. So the easiest thing is to have a look at the table. So we have a homogeneous initial conditions. So x of 0 and x dot of 0 equals 0. We apply line 16 to take the Laplace transform of the second derivative. So we get s squared times capital X. We apply line 15 to take the Laplace transform of the first derivative. So we have a 3x dot, so we end up with a 3s times x. And then we take the Laplace transform of 2x, which is just 2 capital X. That's equal to the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function. Uh, the Laplace transform of delta of t with c equals 0, then, would just be 1 from line 14. OK, so we have the Laplace transform of the uh, differential equation. This is our algebraic equation. We can solve for x. So x equals 1 over, we have s squared plus 3s plus 2. That uh, factors into s plus 1 times s plus 2. OK, that's our uh, solution in s space for x of s. Then we have to take the uh, inverse Laplace transform of this to get back to t space. Again, this type of expression needs a partial fraction expansion. So we can write uh, 1 over s plus 1 times s plus 2 equals a over s plus 1 plus b over s plus 2. We can use the cover-up method again. So to determine a, we multiply both sides by s plus 1, and we set uh, s equal to minus 1. So we get a equal to 1. To determine b, we multiply both sides by s plus 2 and set s equal to minus 2 so that b is equal to minus 1. OK, um, then we need to take the in inverse Laplace transform of this to get x of t. So let's go back to the table. The inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 1, we can use line 3, where a is equal to negative 1. So that would be e to the minus t. The inverse Laplace transform of b over s plus 2 is also from line 3, with a equals minus 2. So that would be e to the minus 2t. And that term gets multiplied by minus 1, because b is equal to minus 1. So we've taken the Laplace transform of capital X using the partial fraction uh, expansion, and we get e to the minus t minus e to the minus 2t. If you write that in a nice, nicer way, you would uh, factor out the e to the minus t term, which is the dominant term and you would have a 1 minus e to the minus t. OK, there's one uh, point that is worth making here. 
um, x of 0 is equal to 0, right? That's our initial condition. But here, x dot of 0 before the um, hitting with the impulsive force is equal to 0. But after you hit with the impulsive force, so that's at 0 plus, it's the derivative of this expression evaluated at t equal to 0. That would be minus 1 uh, minus minus 2, or minus 1 plus 2 would be 1. So the, the impulse force causes a discontinuity in the velocity of x. Before the impulse hits, x dot is 0. After the impulse hits, x dot equals 1. x is still at 0 in the before and after the impulse hits. So let me summarize. We're trying to solve an equation with an impulsive, inhomogeneous term um, that's modeled by a direct delta function. Uh, we use the table to take the Laplace transform of the equation and solve for x of s. Then we can use a partial fraction expansion to write down x of t. Uh, pretty straightforward. The Dirac delta function makes it very easy to uh, do integrals. The only thing that's uh, tricky here is that you notice that the impulse force causes a discontinuity in the velocity. I'm Jeff Chasnoff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.